good. So what, what's, what's the difference between a whole wheat flour and a white flour? And what would be, let's say, an ideal bread to bake with, with uh, whole wheat flour so to get the most nutrients today, with today's available flours? Well, of course, the whole wheat flour, it's whole because it's got the, um, it's got all the bran in it and it's going to have the germ. The germ's kind of the, is that little, I don't know, what would you call it, the soul or that, that dot of life in a, that is going to help the seed germinate and feed it. So it's got all the essential oils in it. It's got vitamins, minerals, nutrients, and that's, uh, and then the, the seed, when it germinates, it, of course, feeds off the rest of the starch there, which is what is milled into white flour. But anyway, it's okay. You're gonna make whole. You're gonna make a whole wheat bread, a whole grain bread. The challenge with whole grain bread is because with all of that extra bran in there, it makes it very hard for the gluten to uh, form those nice thin sheets and capture the air and make a nice spongy, voluminous loaf of bread. So either you're going to have something that's not very voluminous and very dense, or you're going to have something very light or something in between. If you're going to be in between, it means you're going to be mixing some white flour in with it. You know, with what proportion. That's really your decision. But the key is to choose the, the right flour and the right techniques. And fortunately, there's some really good new flours out there called white whole wheat. Uh, the white whole wheat, it's more of an Asian wheat, and just like we have uh, blue corn, red corn, yellow corn, and white corn, well, there's red wheat and there's white wheats, and when you change the, the I think the biggest difference is, is that when you go to a white wheat, red wheats tend to have a bitterness associated with that red color. And it's just, and when you switch over to the whiter wheats, that bitterness is not there. So you have a, and, and how do people, make that bitterness, um, how do they compensate for that bitterness? If something like uh, a lot of the whole wheat bread, if you look at it, the recipe usually has sugar in it or it's going to have honey in it somehow in, in some proportion. That's to mask that bitter flavor. The nice thing is the white wheats don't have that, so you don't have to add any sugar to it other than as something for a yeast food. So let's say you're going to, you can, and King Arthur has a real nice white whole wheat flour. I think Pillsbury has one too, but uh, you know you're going to mix that, and, and what you have to do though is go and use traditional baking techniques that we use, like in our focaccia recipe we talked about a sponge or a pouliche, and you can use those same that same technique with a whole grain flour, and that'll help develop the protein, strengthen the protein, and also help develop a more voluminous loaf. I think. Um, you're always going to have dense bread if it's 100% whole wheat, whole grain. So maybe the thing to do is put in 20%, uh, if you've got 10 cups of flour, 2 cups of white flour, 8 cups of uh, whole grain flour. Or let's say if it's 4 cups of flour, 3 cups whole grain, 1 cup of, of white flour. In our focaccia, we were basically dealing with a white flour. We had some whole grain spelt in there for flavor and for uh, nutritional value for the yeast, you know, but more, more for the flavor. But that was a very, very light and airy bread. So we're talking denser breads here. And you can add things like ground flax seeds to them. You can add pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, sesame seeds. All of those things are going to add weight to the uh, to the basic dough so that it's going to make for a more dense bread. But I think that a lot of what we really need to do is, as a culture, we need to reacquaint ourselves with what that Density, the density is not bad, that this flavor, get used to eating these types of uh, dense breads and embrace the nutritional value that they represent to us. And if you go to a country like Denmark, still 80% of the people will eat that very extremely dense, almost brick-like black bread that I found just totally, that I fell in love with as a baker and still am in love with. And, and so that's a cultural thing. And it means, it means going back in time and going back and embracing the culture that we've given up. And so I think if we're going to become a whole grain culture, we have to learn how to bake it. But we also have to learn how to eat it and learn how to enjoy eating it again. And that's my words of wisdom about whole grain. Well, and actually, what we need to let go of is um, it's just it's this uh, this this fad uh, that has been lasting over centuries. 
that that white flower is is something finer or better or whatever and it, it's just the appearance you know it is it's just something we we took on as something that has, has some kind of value but it's the same thing as if you wear designer clothes they're not much better than any any no-name brand and and you know but you pay much more money for it and so it's, it's all these stories that we're telling ourselves right that white bread is something exclusive and i mean it comes from those old uh, old stories uh, that go back to the romans where where only the richest people could could afford white flour and so we kind of still living by these yeah. old things right well we democrat democratized it so th that which was exclusive is now available to all of us and and much to our our detriment because things like eating white flour and refined sugar which used to be the province of the rich and they had the things like they would have gout and all these other diseases of excess which poor people didn't have poor people just starved to death or uh, but they actually uh, talked about a rich man's disease right isn't that, isn't yeah. that a saying and, but that's been democratized now now everybody has in fact it's probably worse that the wealthy people are smarter and they're going back to natural foods and whole grains and and we have you go to the poor neighborhoods and you find fast food everywhere which is killing people uh, it's so interesting that now well actually that that uh, the, the foods with higher nutrition uh, 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 let's say organic foods or uh, which is not necessarily higher nutrition but better quality all these these foods are now more expensive and they've become now again uh, rich people's uh, 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 you know uh, 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 items and poor people cannot afford them any, anymore so it's kind of reversing history yeah yeah well what uh, you look at all these different um uh, organizations like Urban Roots that try and convince uh, people with fewer economic resources but with a little bit of land or a garden or a, a lawn to plant a garden. I mean we have a garden in our backyard even though we're central Austin, small small plot, but I can grow my chard and grow my lettuce there. There's nothing to stop people from growing food. Other than the fact that if you just live in concrete you can't, but there's always a way to find a way to grow food, be it even just sprouting grains.